Today's lesson is on graphing polynomials. Poly, like poly high school, means many monomials. So, um, we've graphed quadratics and linears, but now we're going to look at higher order polynomials. Um, there's a few things that we're going to look at. Uh, the first thing you can see I have highlighted here are the uh, intercepts. These are the x-intercepts. We're going to look at the n behavior, and that's telling you what the um, which way the arrows point. We call this the n behavior. This is on the right, and we say this is moving towards positive infinity, and this is the uh on the left and on the left we say is moving towards negative infinity you'll get a lot more of that in pre-calc um with parabolas we had maximums and minimums at the vertex however we have what we call a local minimum or maximum these would be local minimums And this would be a local max, maximum. Okay, so there's a lot of things we're going to look at here um, when graphing polynomials. But notice the first thing I did is factored it. Okay, so you want to factor first, and that helps you find your x-intercepts. So other things that we're going to look at... Um, well, let's just jump in. First of all, let's understand n behavior for polynomials. If you have an even degree, like um, the highest exponent is 4 or 2 or 6 or any even degree, doesn't matter what the rest of the polynomial is doing, then both ends are up on the um, right and on the left. But if it's an odd degree, like x to the third or x to the fifth, seventh or whatever, then we're up on the right and down on the left. Okay, up on the right, down on the left. Whenever the leading coefficient is negative, the entire um, graph will flip upside down. And that's only if leading coefficient is negative. Okay, the entire graph will flip upside down. So over here, if it's negative, it'll flip upside down like that. But you'll see that next year in pre-calc. We'll just do the positive leaders this um, year. Now, multiplicity. This is a big deal. This is going to tell you how we intercept the x-axis, okay? And it's the number of times a solution occurs. And in our last lesson, we saw uh, solutions repeat. And I told you that multiplicity would be important. If a solution repeats twice, that means it's just going to touch the x-axis and turn around. And it may do that from the bottom, okay? This is what multiplicity 2 looks like or any even multiplicity. Now, if it just intercepts once, then it's going to pass through. And not sure of the steepness. We won't worry about that. Now, if the multiplicity is 3, it kind of comes in like a parabola and then leaves like a parabola. And it could also twist the other way. That would be multiplicity 3 or 5 or 7, any odd number greater than 1. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can put a few things together right now. So, I'd like for you to use your inter uh, knowledge of intercepts. We'll look at the x-intercepts. Um, in behavior um, and multiplicity and see if we can sketch this. So the first thing we see is that we have 
negative one. Remember, hold on, that's kind of messy. Remember the intercepts are opposite of sine. So we're just really setting it equal to zero and solving. And so here we can see our intercepts, our solutions. That's all the same thing. Notice that this one occurred three times. So that has multiplicity three. Now we have negative one that occurred twice. So that's multiplicity two. And this one has multiplicity one. It only occurred one time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a point at negative one, a point at positive two, and a point at negative three. Those are our intercepts, and we're going to look at the multiplicity. Um, but before we do, let's see what the degree is so we can figure out our end behavior. We want to see if the degree is odd or even. So I count the x's. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 x's. So the degree is 6 which means it's even. And so this graph is going to be up on both sides. Okay, now it's going to do some wiggling and hit these points, but it's going to be up on both sides. That's what we know about an even degree. So now let's look at the multiplicity. At negative 1, the multiplicity is 2. At positive 2, the multiplicity is 3. And at negative 3, the multiplicity is 1. So that's going to tell us how we intercept, intercept the point. So remember with 3, it comes in like a parabola and it comes out like a parabola. Now we don't know how far we're going to go down. So we'll just go down a little bit and turn around. Now this point has multiplicity 2, which means we kiss it and turn back around. Now, we don't know how far down we're going to go, but at some point we're going to turn back around because that's just kind of how parabolas go down. Um, and I'll show you how to figure out how far down that goes. And then this has multiplicity 1, so we're just going to kind of go through there. And that would be a little sketch of what this is going to look like. Okay, that's just a little quick sketch. And that's kind of how these work. Now, we could figure out how steep the sides are and how deep this goes by simply making a table and plugging in a value here, here, on the sides. Okay, so I'll show you how to pick those desired points that we want right now. So here, if I were going to figure out how far down it goes, I would make a table and I would choose a value in here like one half or one. These are all values in here. I would definitely pick zero. I would pick, uh, what is that, negative two. And I'd probably just go over and pick negative three. So you want, it's whatever you're curious about. Like you say, well, how deep here? How deep? How steep? You know, those are the questions you want to ask. And then we already know how to plug in X values and evaluate for Y. Let's try this skill again. This one again is already factored. So if we look here. Our intercepts are 0, positive 2, negative 1, and negative 3. And here, I was fancy. That means the multiplicity is 2 on this one. So it repeated twice. This one has multiplicity 3. Okay, so we plot those points, 0, 2, negative 1, and negative 3. And now what we're going to do is see what the degree of this polynomial is. So that's 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the degree here is seven. I counted the X's, okay? But I had to take into consideration how many times it repeated. So with degree seven, that means up on the right and down on the left. Now, as you start your sketch, you can start from the left or the right. Um, let me figure out my multiplicity. Zero has multiplicity one. Two has multiplicity two. Negative one has multiplicity one. And negative three has multiplicity three. So I'm going to start over here on the right. Multiplicity two means kiss and turn around. Now we don't know how high up we're going. Multiplicity one means just pass through. So pass through, pass through. But multiplicity three means come in like a parabola and leave out like a parabola. Okay, that's a rough sketch just to get us started. If we were going to make a table, let's talk about the values that we would pick. I'm going to start on this side. I want to know how steep and what's happening on the side. I want to know what's happening in here to know how high it goes. How deep does it go? That's between zero and negative one, so that's negative a half. I already know what happens at zero, but I want to know what happens at about positive a half and positive one and on the outside. Okay, you always want to know what's going on in between for our local maximums and minimums and on the immediate outsides. So this is what a table would look like for this graph if we wanted to do a real graph which we're about to do, for example, three, let's go. I just wrote a few reminders over here. Notice this polynomial is not factored. So we have to go back to the last couple of lessons when we learned how to factor this and get that factored. That'll give us the intercepts. Then we'll sketch it using the multiplicity and in behavior and intercepts. Then we'll make a table and then we'll graph it smoothly. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this is going to work out for us. The first thing I would do is come up with a strategy. This is a cubic, so a diamond is not going to work. There's no GCF, so I'm going straight in for synthetic division. Okay, I'm going to have... Uh, possibles of plus or minus one or two. I'm going to put my coefficients in. Notice I'm missing the x squared term, so I need a zero. And I'm going to try one and see if that works. Ooh, close, but that didn't work. I'm going to... Try negative one. I was writing a little large, so I'm going to just rewrite this. And I'm going to try negative one. Hey, there we go. We got a zero. So that's wonderful. So remember, once we have the quadratic, we go ahead and factor that. And I'm going to try a diamond, 2 and 1, negative on the 2. And don't forget, we still have this one. And we have, uh, we're done because leading coefficient is 1. So now I factored it. I do see it's degree 3, and I have three factors. It's always easiest to work in factored form. Um, so I can see I have negative 1 that has multiplicity 2, and then I have a positive 2. So before I get over to my graph, I'm just going to do a quick sketch 
so that I can see what's going on with the graph. Okay, I have a negative 1 and positive 2. Also, when it's in standard form, it's easy to see your y-intercept. When x is 0, my y-intercept is negative 2. So I get a free point right there. Okay, so now it's degree 3, which is odd. That means it's up on the right and down on the left. And now I'm going to see what happens in between. Um, negative 1 has degree 2. And this one has degree 1. So that means I'm passing through this one, going down. At some point, I'm going to hit this 2. Multiplicity 2 means kiss and turn around. So that's a basic... You know, and these things are always smooth. They're never pointy. They're, they're always nice and smooth. So now, where do I want to evaluate different points? Well, I definitely want to know what's going on over here. I'm going to show you how to make a nice table. So I definitely want to know what's going on over here at negative 3. Um, I already know what's happening at negative 1. I know what's happening at um, 0. But I don't know what's happening at positive 1 or positive 3. So I'm just going to go with those few points just to get a general idea of the graph. Now, when you plug in, this is important. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make it blue so that you can see this. If you want to know what negative 3 is, you have three ways. You can look at the original graph and plug in negative 3. Uh-oh, that's a 2 right there. So we get negative 27 plus 9 plus 2. So that's negative 18 and 2 is a negative 16. That's one way to populate that value. Another way is that we could have plugged our negative 3 in here. That's another way. You could plug it into the factored form and do the negative 3 plus 1 going here. Negative 3 minus 2 and the negative 3 plus 1 and let's see negative 2 times negative 5 times negative 2 uh oh I must have done something really wrong I plugged in negative 3 Well, let's see. Maybe my mistake was somewhere else. No, that was good. So I have... This is showing that the answer is negative 20, but there's no way I should get a different answer. Minus 3. Oh, I see where I did the magic. Right here. This should have been a negative right here and so that would have changed its value that's always a good double check to do it more than one way and now i do see my negative 20. but my favorite way and this is the way where i make the least amount of mistakes and it's kind of magical you can use synthetic division the remainder is the answer so watch this. If I do negative 3 and use the coefficients, the remainder is the answer. Isn't that amazing? I love it. And there's a theorem, it's called the remainder theorem, that tells us that that's true. 
And like I told you, synthetic division is quite magical. And for me, it's my most accurate method. And so notice now I'm just plugging one in because I can get my answers quick and easy. And remember the remainder is the answer. And if I plug in three, let's see what I get. Oh, that's positive 16. So I get a positive 16 here. So even though these numbers look large and you say, wow, that's all the way off the graph. Well, not a problem. It, it's giving me vital information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, come over to my graph, which is going to be my final graph. Um, let me get back to white so we can see it really, really good. And I'm making them, my points nice and juicy <laughs> so that you can see them well. Um, if this shows that negative three, oh, I should have done negative two as well. I think I'm going to go back and add negative two and see what that gives me. Negative two. One, zero, negative three, negative two, negative two, four, one, negative two gives me a negative four. Yeah, I needed that information. So negative two is negative four. I don't know how I ended up way over there. So I have some nice points and notice that one goes to negative four also. So remember your sketch, but now I have a little more definition. But notice that when I go over to three, it goes all the way up to 16. So that just means that it's super steep. And I'm trying to repeat my sketch, but nice and smooth. I don't expect for you to be an artist or anything, but you want to try to roll smoothly through the points put your arrows keep it steep now look here at negative three this line should not be touched until i get all the way down to negative 20. so this needs to stay steep and at positive three i don't touch this until i get up to 16. so it should be very steep now you don't do those dotted lines on the side but i'm just showing you how steep it should be Alrighty, let's do one last graph. I've already factored this one for you. So if we look here, we have x equals 2 with multiplicity 2. Here, x squared plus 1 equals 0. If we were to factor that further, we would get x plus i. As a matter of fact, yeah, let's not even solve it like that let's just factor further since we know how that's really x plus i x minus i remember we take the square roots and we have to do the i so these are imaginary there are no imaginary numbers so we don't even have to worry about that but we do have to count it to figure out our degree and i'll show you what i mean so the degree is one, two, three, four. See, that was x squared. Oh, nope. This one was squared. So that's two. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So the degree is five. If you're a little uncomfortable with that, you could multiply all of that out. Um, as a matter of fact, I made it look kind of junky. Let's let me unclutter this so we can see a little bit better. Okay, so as we count our degree, these are imaginary. We have two X's here and two X's here. So that's four, five. So degree is five. Yeah, I had that a little cluttered up. I couldn't see it very well. Okay, and here we have a negative one with multiplicity one. 
So with our sketch, I always like to do a little sketch to get started. That's a negative one and um, positive two is also a point. Um, and we don't get any intercepts with the imaginary. So with degree two here and degree one, um, I mean multiplicity one, multiplicity two, degree five, that means up on the right, down on the left. But multiplicity two means touch and turn around. We don't know how high up. So we've got to make a table and figure out a few points. The points that I would choose for this graph, let's see, would be definitely negative two. Definitely, I want to see what happens at zero because I don't know how high that goes. And I want to see what happens here at one and way over here at three. So you want all the surrounding points, not the intercepts, but pretty much the other points that are involved. And so I'm going to use my synthetic division. Oh, eh, it's going to be hard to use synthetic division. So I'm just going to, because I don't have the standard form. So I'm just going to use the original equation and I'm going to plug in negative 2 here and here and here and so notice there's quite a bit of work involved here negative 4 squared and this is positive 4 plus 1 and this is all multiplied together times negative 1. So that's going to be 16 times 5 times negative 1. That's really big. So I don't even have to worry about that. That's negative 90. So at negative 2, the graph is, so this graph is super steep. Now if I plug in 0 in for these numbers, I get 0 minus 2 squared, 0 squared plus 1, and 0 plus 1. And if I evaluate that, I get 4 times 1 times 1, which is just 4. So that's great information. If I plug in 1 into that same equation, changing colors so I can see what I'm doing, So we get negative 1 squared, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2, so that was negative 1 squared, which makes that a positive 1, and so this is going to be 4. And if I plug in 3, I can already tell I'm probably going to get a pretty juicy number. So if I plug in 3, I get 3 minus 2 squared. 3 squared plus 1, and 3 plus 1. So uh, 1 squared is 1, that's 10, and that's 4. Yeah, I figured that was going to be pretty big. So I know my basic shape, and I have my basic points. So I'm, I have a point here. I already know my shape over here. So that's my guide. And then I'm going to plug in the extra points that I know that are on the graph. So 0, 4, 0, 4, 1, 4, and 3 goes way up to 40. So I know my shape is starting up over here and touching down. These graphs are very smooth. But this is very steep. And I don't know how high it's going up there. If I really wanted a great graph, I would put one half in and see what it does. And let's see here. I'm going through this point, but pretty steep. 
Uh oh. That that got a little crazy. But the graph is doing something like this. And I got a feeling that that might go up a little bit. So I could punch that into my calculator pretty easily and see exactly how high it goes up. But this is a brief introduction to graphing polynomials. You'll get 